open our Bible to our, our text that we began last night. Two places of Scripture. One is in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 19 and 20. Say amen when you get there. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is being quoted here through Moses. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. In other words, you have no excuse. I have. He didn't say I'm going to. He said I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore you choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave unto him for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Now, just back down to the 15th verse. See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil, that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgment, why, Lord, just because you want to be mean to us, you don't want us to have any fun. No, 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 no. That you may live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless you in the land wherever you go and possess it. You're supposed to be blessed everywhere you go. And God said, I have set before you blessing, now you choose it. Now then, let's go to the book of Proverbs. the 18th chapter and the 20th verse. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now, God said, I've set before you life and death. Blessing, you notice blessing comes unto life, Cursing comes unto death. Those two don't ever get mixed up. It's not the devil blessing anybody. He's a killer. Amen. And it's not God making you sick and killing you. Now, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power, in the authority, the Hebrew word is, is actually hand. Death and life are in thy hand or have been turned over to words. You're either going to choose life, words, or death, words. And choosing the words, choose the direction of your life. Now, we've been learning that. Now, choose life, choose words. Choose God. Choose his words. He is our life. He is the length of our days. You don't need to be planning to die at 70, 75 years old. I'm 75. I, I, ain't no way I'm going to die in time soon. I ain't got time to die. I'm busy. 
Gloria and I, neither one are on any kind of medication, any kind of prescription, never have been. If we, for some reason, I had to take uh, a, a ministry, the ministry did an, an, an insurance thing, ministry-wide insurance thing, and I had to take uh, physical for that. And they, when they asked me what medications I was on, they didn't ask me if I were on any. They wanted to know what I was on. I said, I'm not on any. You're not on any? I said, no. They always want to say, boy, you sure are lucky. I don't like that. Lou. How you spell luck? L U C I Lucifer. That's where the word luck came from. There isn't any such thing. No. It all goes back to words. <laughs> Well, brother, don't just don't start arguing me this early in the service. <laughs> <laughs> Do your own research. Find out about it yourself. Amen. Now, death and life are in the power in the hand of the tongue. Or in other words, and I've said this before, and this is this is, and it's used this way. For instance, and it says this in the book of Job. He is in your power. Same word, hand. Uh, I'm, I'm turning this over to you. I'm giving you the authority for this project. Uh, we're calling you on this, on this mission. Do you accept it? Yes, I do. All right, I'm putting this project in your hands. Can you see that that's delegated the authority? God has put authority of life. He has put life and death in the hand of the spoken word. Amen. Now let's go over to the book of Galatian and you will see the correlation now that we've been talking about it. You're going to see something about it from the book of Galatian. Look in this fifth chapter. And look in verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust or the pressures put on you by the flesh. For the flesh... Lusts against the spirit. The flesh puts pressure on the spirit. That S there should not have been capitalized. He's talking about your born again spirit, not the Holy Spirit. You can't put pressure on the Holy Ghost with your flesh. Come on. Amen. No. See, there are no punctuation and capitalizations in the, in the original text. So it had to be added by the translator. Well, if they added it, we can take it out. God didn't put that in there like that. Now, notice this. Walk in the Spirit, and you'll not fulfill, you'll not yield or fall into or be taken over by pressure put on your spirit by your flesh. Your spirit won't obey God, and your flesh don't want to have anything to do with it. It wants to go do its own thing. Well, now, what is in the, what's right in the middle of that? Words. Words. And if, you're, if your tongue is full of flesh instead of the Word of God, then you can't control it. It takes the Word to control your tongue. You're going to have to give your born-again spirit by the Holy Spirit in His Word power over this whole system. It should be spirit, soul, 
and body. Not soul, body, and spirit, or not mind, spirit, and body, or not body and soul. <laughs> Might make a neat song, but it'll get you killed. Because to be, spirit, to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Can you see where words are involved in all this? Because it's the words that, that your mind or your spirit take hold of. That's the way you do everything. Your whole life follows after the words you say. Amen. All right, now notice this. But if you be led of your spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in times past. They that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's not the way you live in the kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. There's no law of the flesh. If you will put the Word of God in your mouth, there's no law of the flesh that can overcome those forces. And they're already inside your reborn spirit. Praise God. I already preached myself happy, man. I'm... Well, really, I, that, that's only partially true. I, I've preached myself happier because I, <laughs> I was already wound up pretty tight when I got here tonight, man. I tell you, I was going to because I already preached this to me this afternoon, and I, it's good. Just wait and see. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they that belong to the anointed one and his anointing have crucified the flesh, if we live in the Spirit, let's also walk in the Spirit. Now, you could go back and say this. Walk in the Word, and you'll not fulfill the pressures of the five physical senses. That's good. Now, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also come under pressure. Bear ye one another's burdens. Help one another and fulfill the law of the anointing. For if a man thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, he's deceiving himself. Let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. He is simply saying when, when, where these things are concerned, help one another, but you mind your own business. Amen. When it comes to other people, you just be a help to them. And if they get overtaken in the fault, you help restore them. But it's not your business to judge them. Verse 6. Now notice this. He, we, right, sandwiched right in here, and this is so important. Every man, oh, verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word respond to him that teaches in all good things. I had the Lord say to me back there years and years ago now that to make Friday on the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast offering day each week because I didn't want to receive offerings on there at all. I got so tired of turning on the radio and hearing religious cons. I, I just, you know, I, I didn't like that. And, um, and I... I just didn't ask, told the Lord, I said, I don't want to receive offerings on there at all. He said, no, 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 no. He said, now that's not in line with my word. And he took me to these verses of scripture, many of them, but particularly this one. And he said, this is the guideline. I want you to do it every Friday. I want you to preach the word all week and then give people an opportunity to respond by sowing into that word. Now, he said, that's what offerings do. And well, I didn't understand that back then, I, a little bit, but not much, but he began to teach me about it. And I've been practicing this myself for many, many years. Well, ever since then. Let him that's taught in the word respond to him that teaches in all good things. Don't be deceived. 
God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall reap what? All right. We just read all of that corruption that'll get into your life if you're sowing in that direction. Sowing what? Words. Amen. You talk that the, the flesh and you bring your attention to the things of the flesh and you, you, uh, you do all of those things and you sow, and money too, you sow it into these fleshly operations, then you're going to reap all of these things that are listed there. Now then, he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life. The Greek word is zoe. It is literally the, the life of God. It's translated eternal life. It's translated everlasting life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have zoe, everlasting life the life of God. One person, one commentator uh, made this statement, and I like it. He said, Zoe is the thing that makes God, God. It's that, he said, you can hardly say it in the English language. It's just the God part of God that makes God, God. It just makes him different from anything and everything else. And that's what, when that is imparted into us, that makes us in his image. Whoa, glory to God. Hallelujah. Keith, I see now why you spend so much time over there on that side. Boy, there's some kind of anointing grows up out of that floor over there. <laughs> I, watch you, I watch you on television and, and you drift off over there a lot. <laughs> Let's see if we can do something about this side over here. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You got something under the floor here or something? That... <laughs> now, when you're hearing these words under the anointing, the, under that, that teaching anointing, and those words, you remember in the fourth chapter of the book of Mark and Jesus said, these are they by the wayside have heard the word and receive it gladly, received it uh, with gladness, with joy. They received it in the right attitude, didn't they? But became offended and Satan stole the word. They received it with gladness. So in other words, the word and the anointing under which it was preached worked. It got down in the heart, but without protecting it, it was easy to steal out of there. Now why? Jesus said they had no root. Wow. You mean words have roots? Yeah, they're seeds. He said the sower sows the word. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Now, he that sows to his spirit, responding, communicating with the one that's teaching under that anointing, receiving that anointing by sowing something that is yours into it, then that revelation becomes yours and not just mine. And when you sow into it, that's when that word takes root in your spirit and that's when you become good ground and produce a hundredfold. Praise God. Now, when do you become the stony ground? If you'd been stony ground, you wouldn't hurt it with gladness. You become stony ground when you get hardened and won't sow towards it. That's when it gets hard, and so there's, it can't take root in there. 
But when you communicate to that anointing and you receive it, how do you receive anything? By giving. And by having your mouth, your tongue, your confession of faith do its duty to that word. You put it in your heart, you put it in your mouth. And you sow seed toward that. So that's, that's really the fundamental purpose that God, when he put offerings as part of our spiritual life, it wasn't because he's trying to, because he's trying to get your money. Did you, did you ever realize that God don't need your money? <laughs> you got it from him to start with, unless you stole it or borrowed it. No, this is his way of giving you and me opportunity to get up into his class. <laughs> get in there with him the way he does things. Watch him work. Amen. Did you know this is the way Mr. Einstein came to the conclusion on uh, E equal MC squared? That's the way he did it. Oh, he made the other scientists so mad. I mean, they, they kicked him out of associations and everything else because when they, particularly the news media, asked him how he came to these conclusions, which back there then was theory. That's not theory anymore. And, um, they, and he said, well, I just asked God, uh, God, if, if, if I was you, um, how would I go about creating this? How'd I make this thing work? You mean you talk to God? Well, yeah, his door's open. I heard a preacher one time, oh, and, and he, was, he, was, he was pretty ugly about it. I'm afraid of those people that say God talks to them. Well, I, I didn't say it to him, but I thought, yeah, I'm afraid of those that say he doesn't. <laughs> Because if, if, if you eat, God ain't talking to you. I really don't have a whole lot care about what you got to say. <laughs> now, God talking to you, that's a different thing. And he'll talk to you out of that book. That's his primary. But I'll tell you what, if you get in the book, he will begin to, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they'll not follow. This year, Kenneth Copeland Ministries celebrates its 30th year in the United Kingdom. This office has grown from a staff of two into 24, reaching more than 17,000 European partners and friends. Monthly, they receive 2,100 letters, more than 1,260 phone calls, and over 12,000 emails. Also, much product translation takes place due to their connection with believers from over 50 countries receiving the BVOV broadcast and magazine. Don't miss the 2012 32nd Annual Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas, July 2nd through 7th. Six dynamic days designed to surround you daily with the power of God's Word. Jump into this opportunity to discover your full potential and release the blessing in your life. Get covered by faith-filled daily doses of God's Word with teachings from Kenneth Copeland, Gloria Copeland, Jerry Savelle, Jesse Duplantis, Creflo Dollar, Keith Moore, and Bill Winston. Friday morning, join Kenneth Copeland for a dynamic partners meeting. And Saturday morning, Gloria Copeland teaches healing school. Come expecting to receive your healing. Terry Copeland Pearsons hosts pre-service prayer Monday through Friday, and youth services are available Monday through Saturday. 1440 Student Ministries equips students to make every minute count for the glory of God for grades 7 through 12. Commander Kelly and the Super Kid Academy will be in session for kids ages 6 through 12. It's all free July 2nd through 7th, the 2012 Southwest Believers Convention. You'll never be the same again. Years ago, the Lord instructed Brother Kenneth Copeland that every Friday on the Believer's Voice of Victor broadcast was to be offering day. And I'd like to read this scripture to you from Galatians chapter 6. Verse 6 says, Let him who is taught in the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. 
Now, many of you are already partners with this ministry, and we thank God for your partnership, your partnership in prayer, your partnership in financial support. God has used you, and through your giving, you have caused so much thanksgiving to abound back to God. Now, listen. Uh, the partnership is more than just somebody standing here asking you, pleading with you to send money. That is not what this is. This is an opportunity for you to go before the Lord and say, Father, is there something you would have me do to get connected with the Copelands and help them do what you've called them to do? And if he speaks to you and leads you along those lines, then you'd be quick to hear, quick to obey, and you watch as you honor God in your giving, he will honor you. That's what the word of God says, and you can build your life on it. Praise God. God. So partners, we thank you for what you're doing in this ministry. And those of you who are yet to become partners, if the Lord is leading you in that direction, then we will add our faith with you in your life that you will see the answers to the, question, the questions that you have had. That's what this partnership is all about. Amen. I want to let you know that the Southwest Believers Convention is still going on and there is still time to get here. It will continue all the way through Saturday evening. Now tomorrow morning, you can join Gloria Copeland for a very special healing service. Service. If you need healing in your body, in your mind, in your soul, where do you run? You run to the Word of God. That's where your answers are and that is where your healing is. So come be a part of this great healing service. Now next week, Brother Copeland will be back on this broadcast teaching us how to watch the words of our mouths and to speak words of life and those words only. You get the Word of God in your heart, coming out of your mouth, that's when it begins to change things around you. So I invite you to go back to kcm.org. If you missed any of the broadcasts from this week's series, go back, get those, download them, get them in your eyes, get them in your ears, get them in your heart, and get them coming out of your mouth. That's when things begin to change. Amen. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you that God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Thanks for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on KCM, visit kcm.org. Online, you'll find free ministry resources to help you live every day in faith. Receive God's promise that everything is going to be all right. Monday on the Believer's Voice of Victory. One of the hardest crimes there is to, to solve is arson, because you burn up the evidence or so much of it. Well, that's, that's the reason Satan uses it like he does, is to keep you in the dark of how it happened. He can just keep you doing it.